dogs are gonna be so jealous when I get home. Oh, good girl. Oh, that's a good one, June. Yeah. I just got sprayed by a dolphin. I didn't wake up saying that this morning. Good morning, we are still in the Florida Keys. We are true islanders now, and we have a fun-filled Friday today. We're gonna start here at the farmer's market at the RV resort. We're gonna hit up Pigeon Key today. We might even go to the Turtle Hospital, and we're definitely gonna end the day on a high note with a sunset cruise. I, I could sit and hang out with these guys till sunset. Oh my God. But. We are starting here at the RV park. There's a little farmer's market and it's really fun to go to. And I'm gonna pick up some fresh fish, which I look forward to doing every single Friday when we're here. It's a really great convenience and it doesn't get any easier than that. I don't even need to go on the water to catch my fish. I just need to go to the market and get it. And then after that, we're gonna go into Marathon, which is a city that's very close to here. It's about 20 minute drive up the keys. We're gonna hit up Pigeon Key and we're gonna do some bike riding on that nice, beautiful bridgeway that they have there. And then we're gonna get on the water. We have a special two hour sunset cruise booked that I am so excited for. And then finally, we're gonna fry up that fish that I buy today. So we have lots to do. It smells so fresh in there. I just like to go smell it. I'm all stocked up at home, so we're just gonna get the fish. I got grouper and I got shrimp, and I'm so excited to cook it. a great parking spot across the street by the Sunset Grill not in the Sunset Grill's lot but on the street just outside of it and it's a lot roomier parking down here versus up top which up top there is really great parking as well because it's nice and close but the spots are really tight and the spots fill up so if it's too tight up there for your truck or if it's just too busy and you can't find a spot come down here to the sunset grill which is where we are and having bikes there's this super cool cut through where you don't need to cross over the highway but rather you go under the highway and even more exciting when we're done and coming back i think we're gonna pop in and have lunch here because why wouldn't you when you're already here and it has this incredible view I'm standing in front of the famous Seven Mile Bridge. It is the epitome of the Keys when you think of this big, massive overseas railroad system that we learned a little bit in our Bahia Honda episode. Um, Flagler built this overseas train system from, I think it was seven years, like 1905 to 1912. And this is the longest stretch that was built over water. It's 6.7 miles. And this part here where you can see pedestrians and bikers getting their activities going is open to the public. You can come here for free and walk it or jog it or bike it and take in the amazing views of the water. Now, if you wanna go all the way to Pigeon Key, it's about two miles. And once you're there, you do need to pay an entrance fee to get in there and use the amenities that they have and do some learning while you're on Pigeon Key. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, is ride our bikes the two miles there. As you go through the Florida Keys, you'll see a lot of these old remnant bridges that have been damaged by just normal wear and tear and also hurricanes, and they're never opened back up. And that was the case for this bridge here. The only way you could get to Pigeon Key up until a couple of years ago was by boat but luckily they invested some time to repair this walking part of this section 
and it is available for us to use currently today. We made it to the end of the walking bridge, two miles of pure awesomeness. If there's one thing that's just nearly as close as being on a boat on the water, it's being on this bridge over the water because it's 360 degrees of blue and turquoise and emerald and it is breathtaking up here and it smells like sea salt and fresh fish and you just really feel like you're a true islander. So now that we got to the end, of the Pigeon Key area, we are gonna go down into Pigeon Key and see what they cost for admissions. We don't know how much time we have to spend in there. We're gonna have to make a call on if we're gonna pay to go in or if we're just gonna take a peek and maybe come back another day to explore more in there. Aaron heard that there is a shark feeding at like one o'clock and it's 1226 right now so that might be a determining factor that makes a swing one way or another I've personally been keeping my eyes out for sharks and manatees I'm just dying to see some big rare aqua life in these beautiful waters I've seen a lot of fish hanging my head over but I didn't see any sharks and I didn't see any manatees I know they're out there I would still uh, settle for seeing a shark feeding here just to see something different and unique. Okay, here's the skinny on Pigeon Key. It's 12.30, they don't feed the sharks until 2.30. So it's kind of a long wait. It's about $15 per person to get in. And the history on this place is very, very interesting. So we're kind of thinking about coming back at another time so that we can spend more time here on the island. They're open from nine to four. And that $15 gets you in. You can do snorkeling, swimming. Uh, there's guided tours, little gift shops. You know, it could be a fun place to spend a few hours, but we're, as usual, not great planners, and the timing is kind of off. But you know what? It doesn't bother me at all to come back. Like, if you're close to this and you have mornings to burn, what a great way to come spend it and just walk this every day for your steps. And I would love to come back again with my swimsuit and a lunch packed and just camp out here all day. Yeah, and they do movies once a month and you can come out and watch that like you get to watch the sunset and then they play the movie after dark right because normally they close at four so these movie nights are the special occasion where they are open during sunset and i hear that the sunsets are pretty spectacular here just because there's nothing around to block your view of the sun setting over the water Yes, and this portion of the highway here on seven, old Seven Mile Bridge used to be the main bridge coming in until like 1982 when they built the new bridge. So this has a very interesting history where it was just a rest stop off the highway. Yeah. And they had a pool where you could go swimming. Yeah. Um, also, the University of Miami uh, took it over after the new highway came in and they used it as a research facility. So kind of cool, interesting history there. Well, let's not forget, Aaron. They also filmed True Lies here. Yes, the scene with the bridge blowing up, that was out here on the, on the old bridge. So much information that we picked up and we didn't even go inside. Imagine how smart we're gonna be next time we come here and we actually take that tour. And we're running out of time, like we mentioned. We have our sunset cruise at 4.30. We need to be there and we gotta get back to get the puppies out. So we really need to be back by like 3.30. So we're just running out of time to squeeze in lunch. So let's head to the Sunset Grill. Well, as usual, I worked up an appetite and I can't wait to eat. Okay. 
Well, that was the Sunset Grill. Yes. Not 100% what we were expecting, but actually it kind of was because I read some reviews and this is the type of place you go for the atmosphere, for a drink, and not necessarily for the food. The food menu at lunch was a lot of classic bar food. So mostly deep fried appetizers and handheld sandwiches for your entrees. Yeah, and we're trying something new where we want to split more meals. I don't know about you guys, but the last him, I don't know, it seems like the last couple of years, eating out is more and more expensive. Like lunch is now like a hundred dollars. If you add in a few drinks, sometimes dinner, you know, if you put a bottle of wine on there, it could be like $150. Easily. But sometimes that happens and it is a really great atmosphere. Like Aaron said, when we first sat down, the view is incredible. And if you want to have a nice spot right up on the water, this is it. Three to six happy hour every day. They have a pool in the middle of their bar. You know, they have a beachy area that we're kind of in now. All in all, I think the Sunset Grill is a great spot to come check out, have a drink. Watching the sunset here would probably be really, really beautiful. So we're gonna finish the rest of our drink here. And then we're gonna head back to the little puppies because we only got about an hour before our real sunset cruise. Hi, Louie. Hey, buddy. You been sleeping? Okay. You guys been sleeping? Oh, hi. Hi, puppies. She got a baroo for you? Back, back. Oh. Oh, good girl. Oh, that's a good one, June. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, a couple of them. Good girl. Okay, back. Let's go. Back, 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 back. Hi. Oh, good puppies. We made the grueling three minute walk here from our RV. And that's one of the really big reasons why I wanted to do this charter is because it's right on site at the Sunshine RV Resort. So we don't have to drive in the dark or any of that. We can just walk to and from super quick, which is our style for sure. And I am so excited for this sunset cruise. I've been looking forward to it for about three months, ever since we got to the Keys back in December. So I am literally on cloud nine right now. Can't wait to finally get on the water. And it was a steal of a deal for the couple. We're paying $150 to go two hours on a boat ride. There's going to be up to two other couples joining us, which is how the rate gets so low for this charter service. And I don't know who the couples are going to be, and hopefully we'll get to make some fun friends and meet the captain, and we are right on time. So we're gonna go check in. actual two-lane road that was used until like the 70s 80s as the highway wine and water don't mix
got sprayed by a dolphin. <laughs> it's like a once in a lifetime magical experience. <laughs> so cool. Really, this really is the experience of the life. Yeah, because you can't predict it. You can't That's predict the this. So is it unusual to be this this many of them here, or they're just kind of all? Usually, I see three or four at a time, maybe yeah. five. Yeah, Dying cheers. That was really good. The dolphins. Cheers. Show of a lifetime. That was absolutely Thanks. amazing. Hey girl. Hey girl. Lulu. Back home to the puppies after the absolute most amazing sunset cruise. Actually, we can't even call it a sunset cruise now. It's a dolphin cruise. It was a dolphin cruise. It was the most amazing dolphin cruise ever. So when Captain Dan asked us what we wanted to do, Aaron said, I want to see some dolphins. <laughs> I'm just like on cloud nine right now. I'm blown away. It was pretty amazing. I'm so excited to go back and look at all that footage. My hair is wind whipped. <laughs> like I smell like sea salt. I feel like I'm a true island person and this dolphin experience put it over the top. I am actually quite hungry <laughs> and we are gonna pan sear up some of that grouper. So here's our beautiful grouper that we bought from the market this morning. And as I mentioned earlier, I get this every single Friday that they're here. And I love getting fresh fish from the market. It's a steal of a deal. This is literally caught here in the Keys. And every single time I go, I ask him, when was this caught? And he says, well, it was filleted yesterday. So they process it in their facility and they sell it very fresh. So even if I can't cook it today, it's going to last a couple of days in my fridge. Now this is $28 per pound and they sell it in half pound fillets. This is the same portion that you would get in their restaurant, but rather than spending like 20 to $30 per entree, sometimes even 35, you get everything in this pound for $28 and you can cook it as healthy as you want it to be or as gluttonous as you want it to be, whatever you're craving. So tonight we're doing it with some quinoa. So tonight <laughs> we're doing- what did, you, what, what did you just say? So tonight we're doing it with some quinoa. I've literally never called it quinoa before. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> tonight we're cooking it with some quinoa. It takes 15 minutes to make super fast. And I'm gonna put some broccoli in the air fryer so I got seven minutes on the air fryer. This is gonna take like seven, eight minutes. The quinoa is almost done. And then I also have some salad that I'm gonna have with mine that I have prepped ahead. Typically, on a fish like this, super fresh, salt, pepper, a little garlic powder, and I always like to put a little paprika. And I wanna talk about paprika because it's the number one dried spice that I use. It gives flavor. It gives color. And the tip that I want to give is buying in bulk for high use spices and herbs, salt, pepper. I always buy them in bulk containers like this. So my everyday paprika thing, I fill this up. It's plastic, it's lightweight, and I use this for every day. And then the remainder of it, rather than carrying around a half full bulky container, I transfer all my bulk spices to plastic bags and I label them so I know what's in it. You could date it like I dated this one 2022. Ginger. We're not getting into Canada with that bag. <laughs> it's starting, yeah, so yeah, I mean, 
this is starting to get a little old, but honestly, I'm going to use this whole thing. I'm not really concerned about it. Could you imagine if I had 10 of these? No, it would be horrible. You couldn't do it. So take, buy these, save money, pour them into these. It's like my number one hack for people that like to cook in an RV. You need spices, you need it to be affordable, and you need it to be lightweight and space friendly. So after all that, I'm actually not putting any of those spices on the fish because Aaron wants Old Bay. And what Aaron wants, Aaron gets. So we're gonna put a little Old Bay on the grouper. We're gonna pan sear it. I can already smell that celery now. Are you ready? But isn't Old Bay pretty much just like paprika, salt, pepper, it's everything that you just said. It's Aaron just... knows that because I just told him the ingredients on it. Yes, so if you're interested, ingredients. It's actually a pretty clean spice blend. Celery salt, spices, which include red pepper, black pepper, and paprika. That's it. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. Usually anytime that I'm pan searing anything, whether it's fish, pork, chicken, so basically any type of protein, what I do is as soon as it hits the pan, I set my timer on my watch and I watch for it to be halfway cooked up and I'll show you when I think I see it on this, but I pay attention to the halfway point and when I flip it. So then when I do flip it and it's cooking on the other side, I just cook it for approximately the same amount of time, maybe a little bit less than that amount of time. So if you look around the edges, you can see it's opaque on the edges. That means it's thoroughly cooked. You can see it's like starting to cook through more than halfway. That's when you want to flip it. Now these are kind of fat. This one's not quite to where this one is, but I'm going to flip them anyway. I'm six minutes in and I'm not going to go the whole six minutes on the other side. I might go five minutes, but look how beautiful that is. Beautiful that is. These Tupperwares are great and when I'm cooking any sort of rice or quinoa, I always fill my entire pot because they take so much effort to make. I love having them ready to reheat. So cook once, eat twice, at least. <laughs> Do you have a certain piece you want? You want this one? Oh, whichever one looks crispier and more brown food tastes good. Yeah, definitely that one. Does that look great? Mm, that looks so good. And then I always finish it with cracked salt and pepper. The quinoa has zero seasoning on it, so gotta salt and pepper that. And that is it. So fast. The cost of the broccoli and the cost of the quinoa is small compared to like normal food costs. The grouper, as I mentioned, was $28. So we got this full meal for $28 compared to going out to steal. As we saw during lunch, you cannot get an entree portion at all for a good deal. So this is gonna be our best meal of the day right here at home and what a perfect way to wrap up the perfect day. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next video. Bye.